Amanda with amandascorner.com. Today I'm going to be doing a Pilates chair routine. It is Monday morning and I'm looking to do a really good workout because last Wednesday I had something really stressful and very scary happen to me and when I went to bed Wednesday night, not only was I flooded with nightmares, but I must have had every single muscle fiber clenched and contracted because I woke myself up in the middle of the night with the mother of all Charlie horses and my left cramp. And I haven't had one of those in years. It was awful. I even woke my husband up. I was screaming, ow, ow, ow. So as a physical therapy side note, if you ever are getting a Charlie horse in your calf, what you want to do is pull your toes up towards your shin. You want to dorsiflex your foot. Well, I was dorsiflexing my left foot as much as I could, and that cramp was not simpering down. So I was incredibly sore the next morning. Um, the reason I'm telling you this story, well, there's two reasons I'm telling you this story. First of all, when I come to do a Pilates workout or when I'm instructing a client or making a video, I don't come to class with um, a completely choreographed preset routine. I come with an open mind. I might have a couple of things that I know I want to accomplish, but um, I really think that's the best way to assess what you need, what your body needs, where your energy is at, where your stress level might be at. So that's how I approach workouts for myself and for my clients. And I really do believe that that's the best way to honor your body and to honor yourself where you're at that day and for that workout. Um, plus, as a practitioner and an instructor, it really, well, it gives me a creative outlet, first of all, but it also keeps me very focused and continually honing in on my craft. So that's the way I approach Pilates. So I know that today, somewhere in this workout, I want to have some type of calf work and calf release. Uh, this is the, it's been several days, and this is the first day that my calf is not super sore, so I definitely want to do something to stretch and release the calves. Um, and, you know, one of my favorite ways to deal with stress is through exercise. It's a really constructive, wonderful outlet, and I haven't been able to exercise during a time of high stress. So I've been, um, well, I've been eating cookies and drinking red wine. So I'm hoping to really work hard this morning and um, get out. I want to have like an emotional catharsis by the time I'm done with this workout. And sometimes to have an emotional catharsis, physicality is the best way to get there. So we'll see what happens. Um, if you are looking for a chair routine that might be a bit more gentle or slow paced, then I have another chair routine posted on my blog at Amanda's Corner, C O R E N E R dot com. And if you go under Pilates chair routines, it's called Sleepy Time Chair Routine or Sleepy Time Pilates Chair. And it's it's a great one to just kind of wind down and it's it's also good for releasing stress, but in a different way. It's really a bit slower and more stretching. So if I haven't frightened you off with this monologue, then we're going to get started. We're going to start nice and easy to warm up. So I have a split pedal chair, and my pedals are split. Not all chairs have that option. Each of my pedals is attached with one light spring. It's a light setting. So if you can't split your pedals and you just have one solid pedal, make it really light. I would recommend even taking off a spring entirely. The lighter you go with standing footwork, the more you're going to start to feel this in the core and in your stabilizing muscles. So arms, balance, just a note on balance. If you want to have a gondola pull next to you, um, if you want to have a chair, you could use the back of a chair, you could be next to a wall. If you're really concerned about balance and safety, you can even do this. You can put your chair inside a door frame so you have something on either side of you really supportive and stable. Uh, the goal here is to eventually have nothing. And if you are using something to assist you in balance, try to let it be an assistant device for balance and that you're not relying on it for support. So your goal will be to get lighter and lighter underneath your hand or hands on your object to the point where maybe you just have one or two fingers touching a chair or a wall. But if you feel like you need something for balance, please do grab it so that you're safe. I'm starting in a Pilates style stance, which is a narrow V, my heels are together. If you don't have something you're holding on to, your arms can be at your sides, it can be at your hips, it can be in the air, wherever you feel like you have most control. We're going to take the right foot, we're going to press the right pedal down into the ground. When that pedal is down, my right hip is going to be stuck up in the air. I'm going to lower it down, I'm going to sink my weight over into that left side. My goal is to get the top of each hip nice and flat 
And I think sometimes if your hands are on your hips, it's a nice way to judge that. You're going to inhale to lift the pedal up. You're going to exhale and press down. And if you can, you're just going to hover the pedal above the ground. So I still have this little bit of turnout here. My knee is staying over the second toe on this right side. A little bit of turnout. I'm going to try to ground down through this left side. I'm also going to try to spread and relax the left toes. I'm going to lift up through the pelvic floor. And of course, I'm pulling the tummy in. And then my other area of lift is coming up out through the crown of the head, like I'm dangling from a rope from the ceiling or dropping down from the heavens above. So we're going to try three more of these. We're exhaling on the way down, inhaling on the way up. On this last one, you'll lift the pedal all the way up, release it completely, form your V again, and we're going to repeat on the other side. So I like to just, not sloppily, but I like to just go ahead and get the pedal grounded, then adjust your position, get your pelvis set, get your tummy tight, find your balance, you're going to lift the heel, and then you're going to inhale and lift the pedal. Exhale to press down. So the heel on the pedal is staying very lifted here. So you're in like a high relevé position. You have a pointed foot. Sometimes I like to think of them like little arrows pointing down to the floor. We have four more presses, inhaling up, exhaling down. So if my calf were still very tender, this wouldn't feel good, having this big point and pressing down through it. And it's doing well, so that's good news. We're going to release, we're going to come down, we're going to come parallel onto the ground. So it's okay if the feet are open a little bit here, it's okay if they're even maybe hip distance apart or slightly more narrow. We're going to bring the right foot to the center of the arch, so I'm right smack dab in the middle of my foot. I'm going to take it down, I'm going to keep everything parallel, I'm going to shift my weight into the supporting side. My knee and second toe will be heading straight, they're going to be due north, they're going to be straight ahead so that we keep that parallel line. It's almost as if we were standing on a set of railroad tracks. You're going to keep everything pointing forward and even. Also, this exercise is reminiscent of bird on a wire, and you're keeping your toes soft and relaxed. So I find sometimes the toes and the facial muscles go hand in hand. So as you relax and soften and release the toes, you can also think about releasing any un extra contractions and strain that you've got going on in your jaws and the neck and shoulders. Okay, we're going to try two more. Their goal is to do approximately 10 of these. Sometimes when I'm taping and talking, I lose count. So bear with me, I apologize for that. When I'm teaching, I can talk and... Uh, keep track of my count. <laughs> and somehow when there's a camera there and I'm doing it too, it's one too many things. Exhaling down, inhaling up. I didn't mention that this chair also has attachments here on the side for handles, which are sitting over here. They're not attached now, but I have them here because we may use them later. Okay, three more times, exhaling to press down, continue squeezing through the stomach, lifting through the pelvic floor, and of course you're trying to stay really steady and level through the pelvis, that's the goal here, that's the core work and the balance. We're going to come back down to parallel, we're going to step to the right heel, we're going to take it down, we're going to level off, engage the stomach, you're going to lift the right toes up towards your shin. So in the last set we had the feet soft and relaxed, like the toes were almost just limp, now we have the toes really active, they're pulling up. That's what you want to do if you have a trolley horse. You want to pull those toes back towards the shin. Two more times. Exhaling down, inhaling up. Last one. Okay, we're going to release. We're going to come to our last step like this. On the heel, toes lifted. Balance through the pelvic bones. Exhale, press down. Inhale to lift. So alignment's really important here. Again, you've got the knee over the second toe. That keeps the lower body safe. We don't, nothing should be painful, nothing should be uncomfortable, but it should be hard. When we come to standing, we ask a lot more of our body here because we do have to balance, we'll fall over. 
Let's try a couple more, inhaling up, exhaling down. It's okay if you're not going at the same pace as me, just go with your breath and do what feels safe. We're going to come down into parallel. We're going to stay parallel. We're just going to go into a roll down and warm up the spine a little bit. I want you to pretend like there's an anchor on the head as you drop down. You're going to inhale chin to chest, immediately scoop up through the belly, hands to your pedals. You're going to exhale and start to lower down, continue to hollow up through the stomach. So if, if you ground the pedals, great. If you don't ground the pedals, great. Just stay where you're at, draw the shoulders down. If you need more stretch, you can bend the elbows and press your weight through the hands. Release the neck. You should be able to shake and nod your head really easily here. Again, there's like an anchor from the crown drawing you down to the floor so you're looking behind you. Full breath, curling back up bone by bone. So I don't want the pedals to lift me, I want my muscles to lift me. I'm gonna come all the way up nice and tall. Okay, we're gonna stay parallel. We're gonna come back to footwork, but we're gonna change this a little bit. What I'm gonna do is take my right foot and it's gonna press the left pedal down. I'm gonna cross midline. So this plays with balance a little bit more. So my, I'm gonna stay parallel, right foot on the toes or ball of the foot, I'm gonna press the left pedal down. So I am crossing midline, I'm actually crisscross through my legs, but all, all the same principles. So I'm gonna sink my weight, I'm gonna keep everything level, I'm gonna keep the heel lifted, and then inhale up and exhale down. So perhaps if you didn't need something for balance before, you might need it now. That's okay. Good, we've got five more. Exhale down, inhale up, staying as steady as you can. You should feel muscles working on this supportive leg. A little ankle. Tummy's tight, pull it in. We're gonna release quietly through the pedal, set it down gently, and then other way. So now my left foot comes to the right pedal, crisscrossing, sinking weight into the right side, and inhaling up and exhaling down. You want to make sure your bottom toes are out of the way. If you are needing to set the pedal down in between repetitions, you want to take care that you're not smashing your toes. That will hurt. Exhale down. Remember, you can have your arms wherever you need them, whatever helps you here. They can even just be hanging. Everything's parallel. We have two more. Good, we're gonna release the paddle. We're gonna bring the feet down. We're gonna make a V in the feet. So my feet may be a little bit wider than Pilates stance, almost um, breaking on like 45 degrees here. We're gonna roll down again. So my inner thighs are zipped together. Inhale, chin to chest. I still take it down. Still just warming up a little bit. Again, you can press into the pedals if you ground them to lower yourself a bit more. You still want the toes spread and relaxed. You want to keep drawing the shoulder blades down the back. And you want to release the head and neck. Should feel good. And then curling up slowly. We have one more set crisscrossing midline here. We're going to keep this turn out. And now, again, we're going to take the right leg across to the left pedal, you're going to keep that turnout. So the knee is going to be heading up to the maybe front corner of the room if you're in a square. You're going to inhale, lifting up, and exhale, press down. So I always like to visualize this exercise like you're coming into a figure four, like you're coming into a stretch, because you have that same external rotation. It's as if you'd be coming into like the piriformis and the external rotators back in the rear. Inhale up, exhale down. We have three more. Last time, exhale it down, inhale up, release, connect the heels, make your V, and reversing. So left foot to right pedal, weight sinks into the right hip, inhale up, exhale down. And you should be starting to warm up by now, hopefully. Five more times, please. Inhale up, exhale down. Good. Relax and release. So I'm going to move myself. You can stay just as you are. I'm just going to move so you can see. So we're going to come into a V here. 
And again, apply style stance is really narrow, so I'm more like 45 degrees. I don't want any torquing of the knee. I want this turn out to come from the hips. So um, unless you're a ballerina, a ballet dancer, and you're used to having a huge, huge turnout, you can do that without sickling your feet. Aim for about 45 degrees. I'm happy with that. So again, arms at your sides or on your hips. You're going to inhale. These are Pilates squats or a demi plie. You're going to keep the heels down. Knees slide out over the second toe. You're going to press through the heels. You're going to squeeze even your sit bones together. You're going to squeeze everything in really, really, really tight. So teeny tiny. You're going to inhale. You have this rotation. It's like your torso is sliding down a wall. Exhale, squeeze it in. Should be work. Inhale, open. Exhale, press and squeeze. The toes are loose here. We're going to try two more. Inhale down. Exhale, press and squeeze. So this actually starts to get into the calves a little bit. As you bend the knees, you move from the gastrocnemius deeper into the soleus muscle. Um, I think I had every muscle on fire Wednesday night, so we're going to work them all. Now, we're going to repeat this, and I want you, if you can, for balance and, and if your flexibility allows you to, I want you to lift the toes. So you're still kind of placing the weight evenly through the tripod of the foot underneath the, the ball of the first toe, the pinky toe, and the heel, but you're lifting the toes. So you're going to inhale and open and exhale press. So this starts to ask a little bit more um, with the flexibility of the calf musculature. Exhale, squeeze it up. Inhale down. Exhale, press and squeeze. Two more. I could do these all day. Exhale, press and squeeze. So good for you. Last time, press and squeeze. Okay. I hope you're warm. We're going to go into the stomach series line on the length of the chair. Again, I'm going to try to hopefully keep everything in the camera shot. I'm going to be sliding stuff around and moving, but you just stay as you are. As long as you can see the screen or hear my voice, you'll be fine. So we're going to lie down along the length here. We're going to come into our five exercises of the stomach series. If you need a break at some point during it, you can always come up, or you can bring a hand behind the head if you start to feel strain to the neck. I like to come off of the chair, back up against it, and then lay down so that my tailbone's really at the edge here, and that gives you your most support, okay? So I'm going to start with the right leg in, left hand crosses the knee, right hand at the ankle. We're going to start with single leg stretch, gazing right at the belly, and lifting my head from my upper belly. I want to keep the neck soft. I'm going to reach this leg long across the room. So here we go. for working the 
So we're going to come into some bridging exercises to do just that. If God doesn't give you, um, if you're not born with a lot of natural curves, then you've got to make them where you can. So the bridging exercises are great for shaping the derriere. They're also fabulous for um, stabilizing the pelvis. So if you're someone that suffers from sacroiliac dysfunction or instability, then these are really excellent choices for you. So I'm on two mediums. If you want more support, you can go heavier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it on two mediums. You, again, can keep your chair how it is. You're going to sit back on top, and I connected my pedal. So I'm in one solid pedal. Okay, I'm going to start with just a basic variation. We're going to come on to the heels in parallel. You have a couple of choices for upper body. Your hands can grab the back sides of the chair. You can go all the way around and grab the back ledge. Some people feel safer there. It's very narrow, though. So um, especially if you're a little bit broader through the chest, you might be more comfortable on the sides. So keeping the pedal lifted, we're going to come up into the air. And maybe just hovering here is fine. Maybe you have enough work here. If you want to add on, you're going to exhale and lower. And if you can, you'll just hover the pedal. It's a lot of work there. You're going to inhale up, exhale to lower down. Inhale, and exhale. So, just like we talked about with standing footwork, we do not want the hips shifting around. We don't want the right or left sides going higher or lower than the other. You want to be flat across like a tabletop. I'm going to try two more. And you want to lift up out of the shoulders as best as you can so you're not sinking in and hurting yourself. We're going to come down and hover and hold. So if you can really hover and hold, you are going to feel that. You're going to feel that in all the right places where we're working. And then relax. Shake out the hands if you need to, the wrist. I've got my, my wags on, which help. But if you don't have something supporting the wrist, really take breaks, shake them out and stretch them. I just slid out my dowel rod, so we're on a split pedal now. We're going to come back into a parallel position, same position. We're going to come up just like we did before, and then we're going to alternate so it's more like a stair stepper movement. So again, your choice for hands starts the same way. We're going to lift up, and then we're going to start dropping one leg and the other. So again, your pelvis is going to try to rotate. The leg, the foot that's pressing the pedal down, your pulse is going to want to drop on that side. You're not going to let it. You're going to use your hamstrings, you're going to use your bum, and you're going to use your tummy, and you're going to keep it still and level. Just breathe naturally through this. Just keep breathing. And if you're feeling good with it, then you can run it a little bit. But you don't want to lose the control. So keep the tempo at a pace where you can keep the pelvis still. And then we're going to let everything hover. I feel that in my hamstrings. Hold and breathe, and relax it down. Nice job. We're going to go right into tendon stretch. We're going to keep it on split pedals. So back onto the toes or balls of the feet. Pilates style stance, heels glued together. You're going to smash them down into the ground. Hands come to the front side, and you won't even have to kind of sit on them to make room to get them under your legs. That's fine. Grab the front edge. You're going to keep pressure down through your pedals. Bum goes up, head goes down. So you're inverted here. You're going to inhale and try to lift your pedals up and back. Why we stretched out the hamstrings earlier. Exhale down. Inhale and exhale. This one often isn't a real big range. Due to flexibility, not just strength. Two more. And we're going to hover, hold it, hold it, relax down. So I started to feel my left calf start to twitch a little bit. So we're going to come into a stretch. We're going to come up and off. If you have a partner that you're working out with, it's nice to have them stand on the inside of the chair here. They can hold it for you. If you're by yourself like I am, then when you do this stretch, you have to get your heels down onto the floor, even if you're just holding on by the little edges of your piggy toes. Otherwise, your chair can flip, so be careful. You're going to press down in parallel. I feel that in my left calf. It's fabulous. You're going to hold the back side, and I don't care if it's narrow or wide. If you get shoulder pain, sometimes holding wider feels better. And if you can, you're just going to hang. So we get this lovely distraction force through the upper body, and we're going to start to release the, the hamstrings, the calves, wherever you're feeling tight. Again, you can just let the neck relax here. What we're going to do is bend the knees, look up in front, and raise the sit bones through the nice long arch. It feels so good. I think it's 
really nice from here to take the hips from side to side. So it's like you're a puppy dog and you're gonna wag your tail. And you might feel like going to one side and holding it or going fluidly back and forth. Either way is fine. Okay, so from here, we're gonna straighten the legs, but try to keep the dip in the back, the arch. And you're gonna try to align your hips up over your heels. When you're in the right spot, you should really feel a nice deep stretch. So this is exactly what my calf needs. And it was just too sore to be able to stretch it out like this the past several days. You can also pedal out your heels here, one at a time. Really just open and release. Oi, 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 I do feel that. Okay, let's stay on the toes or balls of the feet. We're gonna bring a V into the feet, so heels are together. I'm still on medium springs and split pedals. Hands are gonna be at the halfway point here. We're gonna come into inverted V. So we're gonna drop the head, lift through stomach, relax the neck, give it a shake if you need to, and you're gonna inhale to pull up. So I like to come right on the edges. And exhale to lower down, covering the pedal. Strengthening here, we're gonna, if you can let go, you're gonna bring the left arm on top, 
You're going to inhale up until you feel some opening in the hips. So we're doing this to release that hip. Want the shoulders drawn down and back and the chest wide. Um, whenever you're doing seated footwork, as the pedal comes up, it's going to try to round and curve you, especially with this and especially if you have tightness. So you fight that. <laughs> you don't allow it to curve you. You keep the dummy tight and you lift up tall. Exhaling down, inhaling up. Just pause into it. Exhale down. Two more. Okay, so we're going to lower down. You're going to keep this shape. We're going to take the pedal into the ground. You're going to lift into bridge. So this might be all you want to do. You might want to stay right here. It might be enough work. If you can um, raise your pedal, you'll inhale up. When something's really challenging and we're first starting to levitate the pedal, it often just starts with like a small hop. It's okay, just stay safe. As you get stronger, the range grows. I'm going to keep it controlled. So, I hopefully, I have no mirrors in here. I hopefully have my right knee and right toes pointing straight ahead. It's my goal. I'm going to hover this last one. This is eight. Relax it down. We switch. We drop the left heel, ground it into the pedal, right leg on top, right arm on top, check the posture through the torso, inhale up. Oh, that's the feel-good part. Exhale down. It should feel good. You don't ever want to come so far into a stretch that you feel pain or you feel like you're holding your breath. Just a few more. Inhale up, exhale. Might have one side that's easier than the other. It's really common. Okay, so we're going to inhale up, pause into that stretch, exhale, press down, ground the pedal. We're going to bridge. So figure four bridge, lift up through the hips, inhale, pull up, exhale down. Again, we want the, the pelvis to stay really level across. It's going to try to wobble around, especially if you work one leg. This variation, this whole sequence with the stretch and this figure four bridging is fabulous for SI dysfunction. We're going to hold this last one. Release it down and come out. Good. Okay, we're going to go into climb the mountain. I'm going to come back on an angle here. And I'm going to stay on two medium springs. Sometimes I do this heavier, sometimes I do it lighter. But that's where I'm going to stay today. So I'm going to come onto my right foot on the ball of the foot in parallel. Press the pedal down. My left foot's going to come all the way forward in parallel. I'm going to hold the edges of the chair to begin for support. I'm going to round. So it's like I'm scooping my belly up off of my thigh. I'm going to let my head hang down, shoulders pull down. I'm going to inhale and bend the back knee and exhale, press it down without going all the way into the round. And if you feel stable, you can bring one or both hands behind the head. Here. You might get a release through the arch of the foot as well. If I keep that leg straight and take the hips forward and lift through the body, then I might also be able to find a stretch in um, the front of the hip for the iliopsoas and the hip flexors. I'm not getting too much today. Sometimes I get more than this. Relax and release. We'll switch. So we're going to come to the left foot in parallel. Right foot comes forward. I, I don't really care how strong or advanced a student is. I always have them start holding on because it could just be you need to change your foot placement a little bit, or that day you're not ready to balance. And, and I have had clients fall off of this, and it's scary. You can get hurt. So hold on for a couple. I always like to hold on for two, because that way you can come down and you can reset yourself if you need to. And drop it down. Let the heel settle really heavily towards the floor. Find a calf stretch. Okay, so let's try this side. We'll take the hips forward and a lift up through the torso. The taller you come to the torso, the more you're going to open up the front of that hip. A little bit of a lean. I just am tight in my calf. So you might get a big stretch here. That's great. Hold and breathe if you do. Okay, we're going to come back to this first side. Right foot down, left foot forward. We're going to repeat this with a genie arm. 
So I'm going to bring my right arm on top. I'm going to do my opposite arm on top as the leg in front. And I'm going to repeat this, but I'm going to try to keep the spine more lifted and long. So it's going to look like this. Two more. So if you were not able to let go with the last set, then this one can be dangerous for you. I'm dropping my heel for a stretch as I chit chat. Um, so if you have handles, you could use handles. Again, you could be against a wall, have a gondola pole, a walking stick, whatever you have. You can use something for balance to help assist you with that. You can also perform that with the hands on that front leg, just for a little bit more balance. Okay, it's kind of intermediate variation. All right, on to the second side. I'm going to do it with a full genie. I'm going to bring my left arm on top here, and then I'm going to inhale and exhale push. Four more. And drop it down. I almost lost my balance on that set. <laughs> Maybe it's not me, but I wobbled on the first one. Good. Okay, we're going to relax and release. We're going to bring this down to two light springs. That's where we started originally, but we're going to keep the pedal together. All right. We're going to open and release the back a little bit. Maybe we'll go into swan, too. Okay, so we're going to come onto the belly, take the pedal down into the ground. Shoulders will line up over the wrist. I'm going to start with the legs open about the width of the box and a little bit of a turnout. All right, so again, to work the bootay here, you're going to keep the leg really energized and you're going to lift it slightly to the ceiling. So you're, you're activating your bum and your hamstrings here. Um, tummy zips up and in, shoulders pull down the back. And just really slowly on an inhale, you're going to start to lift up bone by bone. So I don't care if you take three, four, or five breaths to come up. You just really want to try to move one vertebra at a time, you're articulating into spinal extension. Exhale smoothly. You'll come back down, starting at the base of the spine, and then out through the crown of the head. I'm going to think about getting long before I come up. I'm going to inhale out and up. I don't really care how high I get. I want to make a really long curve as I lift, so that I'm not pinching anything in my back. I want to be creating more space that's healing for the back. Inhale out. Legs are still activated. Tummy's still drawing up and in. Exhale down. And do one more. I'm reaching out through the ball of my foot. This is like a demi point position. I find I get a lot of energy that way. It's like light beams reaching out through the ball of each foot. Okay, legs squeeze together. So we repeat this. I'm going to scoot back a half inch. We're going to repeat, and you're going to keep the inner thighs zippered together. You're still keeping that lift to the sky. So it's not uncommon for somebody's legs to tire out before their back and belly do with this sequence. So rest the legs if you need to and then bring them back up as you can. One more. We're going to keep the legs squeezing together. Exhale the pedal back down so that it's hovering. Inhale, bring the elbows nearer to the body. Exhale and push. Inhale up. All the while, I am pulling the shoulder blades down the back. They stay integrated into my body, into my torso. Five, double speed. Nice and long. Okay, so from here, um, I think I'll start turning this direction. I'm going to turn my back to you, sorry. So my hands are going to stay, and actually, I'm going to ground the pedal with my right hand and use my left hand to help me turn. I'm going to come over onto my side. If you need to come all the way up off the chair to do this safely, please do so. Okay, so our bodies don't actually do this. Some do it more than others. I'm going to pretend like from my waist down, I'm lying on my side, and from my waist up, I'm lying on my belly. So I'm in a big rotation here. I'm going to repeat. Inhale, lifting up. Your arms may or may not be straight. You want to refrain from bending them more if they're not straight. As you warm up into this, you might find you can get a little more twist. This is a lot of work for the obliques as well to stabilize you. We're going to come back through center and go the other way. This is, I don't know, maybe this is hard, maybe this is like the lazy way to do it so you don't have to get up and off each time. It just saves a little time. I tend to have my clients come off, inhale up, and exhale down. But 
sometimes the way I teach and the way I work out are not the same. One more. Good. Come back onto the belly. We're going to keep the pedal down for the moment. Come parallel. You're going to bend your right leg into 90 degrees. And then you're going to take your foot and flex it. Dorsiflex it. We're going to take the right heel and lift and smash like you're smashing something on the ceiling. And inhale and lower down. For more challenging when you have a pedal. So now we draw in a lot more core. We're going to keep the elbows soft. Exhale, press it up. Inhale, lower down. Two more. More butt. I told you I like to work the bottom. Okay. Heel leads. Exhale, press it up. Inhale, down. There should be no knee pain with this. You're lifting from your bum. If you need to ground the pedal, it's fine. Relax and come up. We're going to stand behind the chair and we're just going to flip the hands over and give the wrist and the forearms a small break here. Ah, oh, that was so good on the back. Okay, we're going to take one spring place it to a heavy setting, so it's going all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to take one spring off and then disconnect it completely. So my pedals are together. Don't do that with split pedals or you'll have um, one side that's going to fall on you. It could, it could break a toe. So one pedal, but one spring, heavy spring. We're going to come into swan. A lot of people have a hard time with swan. Um, I don't even know if it's so much that it's a difficult exercise, but they have a hard time getting in the right spot. And I have a lot of clients that end up sliding forward and off of it. So sometimes we'll put a sticky pad, either like a little pad, um, and, a, and a pad also because some people write on their ASIS's front bony part, it hurts them. So sometimes we put a pad or even shelf liner to keep them in place. I don't tend to use any of that. So I'm gonna, again going to start with the legs open. So they're um, the distance of a chair approximately and turned out. This is an easier position to start in. It's a nice place to warm up and to swan. I come pretty far forward with this. I like to pivot right on those ASIS bones. So when the pedal is down to the ground, you will end up bending the elbows and the legs will lift behind you. So this is slow motion. You're going to inhale and this is why we did all that back warm up. You don't want to crunch yourself up or you're going to hurt your back. You want to be long, so we're making a long curve here. So we're inhaling up and exhaling down. And I'm pressing through the heels of the hands. So as you get comfortable with it, you can pick up a little bit of tempo if you'd like. You want to keep the control. Okay, so rest. We're going to come back into this, but we're going to glue the legs together. So we're going to zip up again to those inner thighs. You should be squeezing the buns, squeezing the belly, everything nice and tight. That's your core. You're working your core. So you're going to bend the elbows and lift. Inhale up. So sometimes when we bring the legs, not sometimes, when we bring the legs together, it can be more pressure on the low back. So if you're someone that has a sensitive low back, then you may not like that. Um, you can keep some space between the legs. Or you just may not come as high. I don't think I'm coming up quite as high. It's okay, because it's safe. Couple more. Relax, release. We're gonna come up. We're gonna flip the hands. I don't know if you can hear my music. I've got some music in the background. <laughs> okay, let's see, what else do I feel like doing? Let's come into another variation of inverted V. So I'm going to go into two heavy springs here. So I'm going to reattach, hopefully. Hmm. There we go. So I'm on two heavies. My puddles are together. I'm going to do this. I think I will do it with my back too. So we're going to come into an oblique variation. We're going to be crisscrossed. You're going to bring your left foot to the left edge in parallel on the toes of ball of the foot. And then I'm going to take my right foot and crisscross on top. There's no weight on this. I want to be careful not to tuck it underneath the pedal or I will smash my toes. 
I'm going to take my left hand to the back side. It's going to grab the shelf, the right hand to the front. So I'm making a diagonal here to get my obliques. Then I'm going to hollow out the belly, drop the head. I'm going to inhale the lift and exhale the lower. So for more challenge, you can make this lighter.
Okay, so when it feels secure. Okay, so if you have handles, you can press into the handles as little as you need to. Your goal eventually is to do this without handles. You can also, again, do this in a door frame next to a wall, holding a gondola pole, any of the things we've talked about. I'm on the ball of the foot, parallel on this back leg. We test it out for a couple. We're going to exhale and press to the heel. We're doing a lot of hamstrings and butt today. And then you're going to come down really quietly and softly. So this deceleration phase takes a lot of power. At the bottom, we're going to drop the heel. Because again, one of my goals was to release the calves. So we're going to take advantage of that with each repetition. Exhale, pressing up through the heel, come to stand. And melting down with control. And then drop the heel. So I'm using my handles, and I'm tired at the end of the workout but I'm not actually really relying on them. Okay, so if you feel safe with all that, we're going to add on. You're going to exhale, you're going to press, you're going to come completely to standing. So on that front leg, you're going to take this back leg and you're going to squeeze it behind you. More derriere, hamstring and butt. Take your time and find your pedal in parallel. That's really important for safety. Come down and drop the heel. So exhale, press up. Come to standing, squeeze the leg behind, zip up through the belly, and lower down. So these are slow. You're going to do each part of the exercise with a breath. Exhale, press the weight, really ground through that heel. You're going to breathe naturally. You're going to squeeze and hold. You want to pause, that's where you get the work. You're going to find your pedal, lower down and find a stretch. Let's try one more. Not, I think we've done, I think this is our fourth with the complete exercise. Six in total. So again, this is one I like to do a couple, just start slow and figure out, because a lot of times you might feel something in the knee. I don't want you to feel anything in the knee. Then you need to reposition. Or maybe this just isn't a good exercise for your body. So you've got to listen to your body. Okay, so I didn't mention this. This is just like how we started. We're coming full circle. You want to keep your hips level, just like we did in standing footwork. You're going to exhale, keep those hips level, and then you're going to melt it back down. Lift the heel lower. Exhale, press up. And we'll do one more plane like this. Melting down should be a lot of work for your leg. And lower that heel and find a stretch. Take a breath, catch your breath here. We're going to add standing if that feels safe to you. You're going to exhale up. You're going to lift. You're going to squeeze. Lower down. Find your pedal. <laughs> Melt it down. Try to keep the front toes relaxed. Remember, you, you don't want to be gripping and relying on them. Ah, feels good. Exhale, press. We've got three more. Squeeze it behind. Keep the hips squared off. You don't want to rotate the hips as you squeeze. Find your paddle. Melt it down. And stretch. Exhale, press and squeeze. Well, I feel a smile on my face, so that's a good sign. I definitely have a little bit of a glow going on here. And this workout was cathartic for me, so thank you for joining me if you're still with me. Exhale, press up. I'm going to stand and squeeze. So good actions usually lead to more good actions. This was definitely a productive and constructive way to deal with all of my stress. So instead of cookies and red wine, I'm going to go drink something green and um, I'm going to have a great day. So I hope you do the same. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.